Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Geographically? Geographically. Geographically. This is cool. So I would say make sure that pretty face is shown. Yes, true. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing, Alan. It's that true. face. You good? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed our latest Small Talks episode where we talk all about consistency. Today, shush, today (laughs) on episode number 110, we are going to do a scratching the surface episode and we are going to reverse engineer regret. So if you are an avid listener of this podcast, you have heard me say many times that I carry a flashcard around in my pocket um, with the top five regrets of the dying. There's a book by Bronnie Ware where she worked in hospice with the terminally ill and she started to realize very quickly that her real job was to listen rather than just to take care of them. And she noticed that they all had very similar regrets. So that's kind of what this episode is based on. I'm going to read them to you very quickly. Number one, I wish I had lived a life true to myself and not what others expected of me. That's number one. Number two is I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And honestly, I believe that that is because of number one. Because had they lived a life true to themselves, they would have wanted hard work, in my opinion. Number three, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Number four, I wish I stayed in touch with my friends. And number five, I wish that I let myself be happier. My goodness. Right. You ready for this? I am ready. So, Alan and I do not know. So, we both made a list. There's three columns. It's will never regret, might regret, and will regret, or will definitely regret. So, we both, you know, filled out this list. We have not seen each other's answers. Mm -hmm. So, I'm interested to see where we both went with this. But as we give our answers, think to yourself, because as I was writing this down, it really gave me a clear picture of what really matters to me. Yeah. And it, it, it's just strange writing this down, picturing it in the future. So as you hear us saying it, feel free to take out your notebook, your pen, pencil, crayon. Uh, what's the thing that they write? The, you dip it in the ink? Uh, pen? No, the other thing. <laughs> A quill. A quill, yes. A quill, yes. A quill. Um, so do you want to hammer one first? Yeah, I think, so again, will never regret, might regret, and definitely will regret. So which column would you like to start with? So, you know me, man, I always like the bad news first. Okay. I would say we start in will regret. And because I think a lot of people are doing things now that they're going to regret. That they're going to regret. But it, it, including us. Of course. Of course. But it, maybe it feels good in the moment or maybe it fulfills your needs in the moment. Mm. And, you know, you're going to look back and realize, like, ah, okay, that's not exactly what it was. There's a quote that I always go back to that Tony Robbins says. He says, human beings will always give up their goals and dreams to meet their needs in the moment. So the key here is to try to start aligning your life with the things that you'll never regret that also fulfill your needs. Okay? Hammer it. So for definitely will regret, um, the first one I put is not having courage. Now, I realize that that's very ambiguous, and I say that, you know, on the Legacy episode, I said, I believe that when we die, we will be remembered for two primary things. Number one, how courageously we fought for what we believe in. And number two, how fiercely we loved. I often say things to my clients like, execute like a machine, but love like a saint. Huge heart, but you also want to be disciplined. So not having courage is a big one. Interesting. Uh, I think I went, uh, let's see, let me, let me pick one. Yeah. So one I went with was allowing fears to control my life. If you listen to this podcast you know that I am not about that. I don't like being afraid of things. I refuse to allow my fears to dictate 
where I go, what I do, who I talk to, the chances I take, where I project my life going. So in a moment where you're afraid and you're thinking to yourself, like close your eyes and just think like getting on that plane is fucking terrifying to me. It's so scary to me. You know, booking the tickets is so scary to me. Walking down the runway is so scary to me. Driving to the airport is so scary to me. But what is, what's on the other side of that? You know, like everything. Travel. Tra- well, so many things for me. Right. Arizona, Florida twice. Mm, Florida you know, again. In Florida a again. In a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, England. Yep. I think that for me, if you're anything like me and you're listening, you get so overwhelmed with fear in the moment that you don't even think of what could happen. Like what amazing, great experiences, life-changing experiences you could have. Yeah, you're so focused on what could go wrong that you forget That's what could go right. That's one of my biggest motivators for everything is, I, without knowing it, I've, I've done this. I've, I've thought I will really, really regret not getting on a plane. I would really, really regret so many things. So we went to the bar this past weekend. We did. And the only real reason we did that was because Kevin believes, and uh, sorry to air out your no, truths no, no, here, no. but I know you'd like this. Yeah. So uh, let's be honest, you feel uncomfortable at the bar. I do. And so we went fear chasing this past weekend at a bar with um, Carly, Bianca, and Matt, and we had a good time. It was a blast. But um, do you want to go into why you're sure, afraid in that scene? Sure. So if you've ever seen a picture of Alan and I standing next to each other, other than the fact that I am jacked and he's not, <laughs> you'll notice that Alan is like a foot taller than me. So if you're a woman listening to this, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, I think I'm right, but I also clearly am biased. So if you see Alan and I walk into the bar together, who's going to get more of the attention? I would guess Alan. And I think most people would guess Alan. Now that's... Right, wrong, and different. This isn't about making me feel bad. This isn't about making you feel bad if you're short. That's not what this is about. But to me, that's one of the things I have on my will never regret is learning about myself. I'm glad we can actually segue into that. Wow, man. You have to understand that maybe it is that way. Maybe. Right? I think generally speaking, you know, women tend to like taller guys. Right. I think that's fair. Yeah. Fair to say. So maybe. Especially in that arena. So let's say it is that way. Mm -hmm. I have two options. I have two options. One option is never go there again because right. I'll be uncomfortable. It's not where I shine the best. I'm a conversationalist. I truly believe the longer you spend around me, the more valuable I will become in your eyes. I truly believe that. And you're funny as shit. And I'm, I'm some, some say I am funny. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard it. I've heard it. Uh, I've also heard wildly inappropriate. Um, either way. Either and way. the other option is what was the first option I said? Do oh, it. The first option is that you. Accept that? I think I said I don't do it. Okay. Either So there's two options. I either do it, I accept the fact that that's the way it is, right. or I don't do it. Yeah. And and I don't want, I want to be well-rounded. I want to be able to do anything. I want somebody to say, hey, let, we're going to go do this tonight. Do you want to do it? And I want to choose consciously in my own brain, yes, I would like to do that, or no, I'm just not interested in doing that right now. And we talked about it prior to setting up the weekend, and it was basically... Are you not going to the bar because you don't like it, or are you not going to the bar because you're scared? And Kevin admitted to himself that more of it is because he's scared. Yeah. Even though the bar isn't something that you necessarily like. So again, you're you're not going to overcome. Um, you're not going to regret the things that you tried and and tried to overcome. You're gonna regret not trying. Absolutely. That's one of the big things that I put. I put the things I will definitely regret not trying. Basically giving up on your dreams before you even start you don't even you never even tried and trying is scary especially when you're going outside your comfort zone and when it's something close to your heart like it's the girl you love or it's the person you want to be with or the guy you love or it's it's you know being a successful podcaster or a speaker or a model like all of those things are scary and I don't know what your specific dream is or your dream person is but when you really really care the chances of you getting hurt are far greater because you care. I think that that's always been a fundamental lesson that I've ever, I've always tried to help anybody who reaches out to me and says like, I love, I actually put that down too, love too deeply is something I will never forget. Mm. I forget, regret. I will never, <laughs> I'll probably never forget it either. Yeah, you definitely won't. But I'll never, I'll never regret right. leaving my heart open. I understand it puts me 
in a position where I might get hurt. Right. I understand it puts me in a position where I might get taken advantage of, but it also puts me in a position where I'm able to help people mm-hmm. and I'm able to teach people my lessons and be vulnerable enough to realize like the only reason I want to do this is because I love. I love people. I love helping. I love um, opening the door. Let's go a little deeper on that. Oh, so sure. your goal is to, your mission, your purpose, your your intention is to be the person you needed most. Yes. And if you didn't have the philosophy of wanting to love fully and open yourself up to hurt and to potential pain by having courage to love fully, you wouldn't be able to help others in those circumstances right. because you've never been there. You right. can't help someone with something you've never done, you've never been. And so that's one thing that I put too is like loving fully. I put... um having the courage to tell the person I love that I love them. If there's someone out there that you are in love with or that you love deeply, there's that quote, people never get the roses while they can still smell them. If there's someone out there where they were to pass away and you were to not get the chance to tell them how much they mean to you and you have not had the courage to tell them, I would argue that that is something you will regret. I would I would tend to agree with that. This is... Honestly, it's only been, I don't know, nine, ten minutes, but it's been a uh, one of my favorite episodes for sure because it's making me reflect on a lot of things. And if you're listening, I think you're probably reflecting too. And be honest with yourself. It's fine to figure... It, it's it, You're going to figure out what you're going to regret. Mm. And maybe it's not what you expected to regret. Like, I wrote down losing friends on here yeah, as something Under- that I might regret. Might. And you know me, I'm... I've been the guy who just says, whatever, it's fine. Right. Like, this, if this is what it takes, this is what it takes. Maybe this is what it takes, but could I have done a better job of it? Could right. I have allocated my time better? Could I reach out more? Could I be more flexible? Could I be more understanding? Could, you know, it's, yeah, these are the hard questions. These are the painful questions. These are, it's better to ask yourself now when you can actually make the change. Yeah. I can change this right now if I want to, and I don't have to regret it. So what's something that you regret in your past. And, and here's the thing, too. I, I just want to bring this to the listeners because it's super important. Everyone is afraid to admit they have regrets because, like I always say, if you're happy where you are, you'll be not only okay with where you've been, you'll be thankful for it. I get that the actions you took brought you here and you're grateful for that, okay? So don't take this as, oh, you lived your whole life wrong, you did everything wrong. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I've made my fair share. When we're saying that we have regrets, what we mean is like, have you ever looked back and been like, I can't believe I did that, or I can't believe I said that, or I, I can't believe I didn't do that thing? I have one story in particular that I think is going to resonate really strongly, but I want to hear Kevin's take first. I've said it many times. I'm, I'm very open and honest about it. Um, the girl who's part of the story has reached out before and said it's okay. Like I understand what, what was going on in your head, but I was that boyfriend that, that girls, they look back and they regret dating. Like, I was that boyfriend. I didn't want her to travel. I didn't want her to chase her dreams. Mm-hmm. I I was the self-conscious person who had trust issues and wanted to hold on to somebody so tightly that they wouldn't chase their dreams. Like, that's something I'll, I think I'll always regret it. Even though she reached out and said it's fine, like, I'll always regret that because that's not who I am. That's not a good representation of the man I want to be. I have to bring this to the listeners right now. So the fact that Kevin was willing to admit that regret is exactly the same reason why he will never let that happen again. I'm going to say that again, folks. A lot of people wish away and excuse away their own regrets, their own mistakes, their own bad behavior. Kevin is willing to own the fact that he made a mistake, and that is the only reason why he has been able to change that. Yeah. If, if it's someone else's fault, folks, you have no power to change it. And just before Alan um, goes into his detailed story, or what, I don't know if it's a story. It's fairly quick. Um, yeah. No, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> um, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I want, on the same line, it's like, do I regret my behavior? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Did I learn something from it? Absolutely. Exactly. The regret that I have is only be- because I know I'm better than that. Yeah. So it's not like, it wasn't a waste of time. It's not like I regretted the relationship. No, I regretted exactly. it. But I want, right. I want to make Good that clear. Yeah, Good I want to make that clear. Yep. 
if you didn't take anything from the relationship, maybe you weren't looking, maybe you weren't open to lessons. I took a lot from that relationship. And, you know, it's like Alan said, it's something that I'll never let happen again, for sure. I would argue the only reason you took so much and grew so much from those experiences were your willingness to self-reflect and say, I could have done better, I should have done better, I wish I had done better, right? There's nothing wrong with wishing you had done better because now you have the power to do that in the future, and that's growth. Tell us about you. So I have this one story. So I dated... uh, One of my ex-girlfriends, her name is Courtney. She's awesome, awesome person. And we dated for about a little under five years. And I lived with her for a year. And in college when I met her, um, there was this fraternity party. And this was back in, I think, 2012. And we were in the basement of Zeta Psi at WPI. And this girl was unbelievably beautiful. And she had so many guys... Uh, asking her to dance. So many. I swear she rejected like eight dudes in a row. And I'm sitting there watching like, okay. And I wanted to dance with her and I was too afraid to ask. And Manu said, well, you obviously want to dance with her. You know, why don't you ask her? And that's my buddy Manu, one of my roommates. And I said, she just rejected like eight dudes, man. She obviously doesn't want to dance. He's like, I guarantee you she'll say yes if you ask her to dance. And by the way, he's always been right when he did that. Thank you, Manu. Best wingman ever. <laughs> but anyways, um, we have this thing called the $2 bill. Kevin was right. This is <laughs> not as quick right. as we thought. See, guys, I know what's up. In college, whoever had the $2 bill was really cool, and we would always bet each other on this $2 bill. We all signed it. It's a whole thing. Point is, he said, I'll bet you the $2 bill. She says yes. I went and asked her to dance. We ended up dancing all night. I got her number. We went on dates. We ended up dating for four and a half years. And... I learned so much in that relationship. I cherish so many memories from that relationship. If if Manu didn't bet me to go ask her to dance when I wanted to, I would not have had all of that experience, and I would not be the man I am today. To this day, that bothers me to my core. I didn't have the courage to ask someone to dance who had just rejected eight other guys because I thought she wouldn't want to dance with me. Luckily, I had Manu bet me and played to my ego to where I asked and it changed my life. Is there someone out there you want to ask to dance? Is there someone out there you want to ask on a date? Is there someone out there that you love that doesn't know you love them? Is there someone out there that you want to be with that you haven't even told them? If that's true, it takes courage and you will regret not stepping up. Uh, that hit me right in the right in the feels. One of my biggest fears is rejection. Mm-hmm. And one of my things that I know I'll regret is allowing the fear of rejection to control my life. It's this is a it's a conversation with yourself. Like we've said this on other episodes. It's been a minute since I've said this, but being hyper conscious can be difficult. Right. But because you have to own these things. You have to own these things. But what is the other option? Right. It's just letting life happen to you. Yeah. So speaking of being hyper conscious and talking about things that are difficult, one of the might regrets I have, and um I won't go into this I can quickly go into the story, but is not building a relationship with my father. Mm. After the Evan Jarshower episode, we talked about that. That was a a month ago, a couple months ago. But, you know, it's, it's eventually my father will pass away. He will cease to be on this earth and existence anymore. Can you give some context? Yeah, so growing up, um, I guess my, my dad wasn't around. He was into some things, drugs, gangs. Um, so my mom gave him the boot and said, leave us alone and I won't collect child support. So that's, that was the early part of my childhood, but um, you know he was never there. I remember sitting in class, and you know how they would always say like, "Oh, what do your mom and dad do for work?" Right. I never knew, so I just said so construction. construction. Yeah. yeah, sounded good. Yeah, probably a construction worker. Right. Um, but you know that's something I dealt with. I've always had a big chip on my shoulder because of that. I've always felt not enough because of that. I've always wondered what if because of that. So uh, a couple of years ago, he I found a message from him in my Facebook uh, Facebook inbox from two years prior. Didn't see it. I don't know how it even got in there. But I ended up reaching out and, and meeting him. Mm-hmm. And I've seen him twice in the last like two years. But it's like, I'm a busy dude. You know, I'm very busy. I don't have time for a lot of things. I don't have time for my own stuff. Father's Day, a year ago. Yes. Two years ago? A year ago. Kevin and I were ago. alone on Father's Day. We might have been in this room. No, we were we were in at, at the uh, your house, oh, okay. Matt's house. Um, but I remember talking to you, being like, "Everyone's with their fathers today," and you and I are hanging out. That's not a coincidence. I went and saw my father's grave for the first time 
that evening. Mm. As a matter of fact, um, it was like ten o'clock at night. Um, and 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 I only did that because you and I were talking about things we might regret, and I knew that I would regret not sort of facing that and 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 um, doing that. So, anyways, this this is the tough stuff. Oh yeah, this, this is sucks. the tough stuff. When you reverse engineer regret and you figure out, okay, what will I never regret? Like, you're not going to regret taking care of your health. You're not going to regret being a kind human being. Yeah, I have that. You're not going to regret helping someone. You will regret being a dick. You will regret, you know, giving up on your dreams or, you know, dr binge drinking alcohol. Whatever it is for you, like, this is... Doing this exercise with us and, and reverse engineering the things that you will regret, you definitely won't regret, and then the things you might regret is going to give you a, a solid framework on the essentials, like your essentials. Yeah. You know? I, um, just for, for the listeners, I'm actually planning on seeing my dad sometime this week, so that's how you know it's something you might regret. Mm. Like I might regret, I literally might regret that. In 20 years, when he's if not around, don't. if I don't do it. Exactly. And that's something I've... Uh, guys, I have literally juggled with this for years. I'm 29 years old. Like, I've seen my dad three times in my entire life, so... And it, I didn't... Don't remember seeing him for, like, 20 years. So, it's something I've been juggling, and it's that's why it's in the Might Regret column. That's why it's something I'm going to do. You, you have to understand, like, the pain of regret hurts. It hurts more than rejection it hurts more than f facing a fear it hurts more than getting laughed at or you know it's it's i don't want to regret anything you get one shot at this life and i plan on taking full advantage of it there's the pain of discipline today or the pain of regret tomorrow and um jim Rohn says that discipline weighs ounces regret weighs pounds actually i think he says tons mm. and uh kevin just closes notebooks i'm notebook i'm gonna close mine too um, one thing I do want to say is I had an ex ex girlfriend reach out to me a few years ago um, after I got in that bad car accident and I got jumped by that schizophrenic and I was doing some soul searching and I was reaching out to a lot of people from my past because I was trying to reverse engineer my own regrets and I asked them some questions for real feedback. I said, what from your outside perspective about me have you noticed? And I got a lot of really, really interesting answers, by the way. If you if you want to find out other people's perspective on you. Remember, it's hard to see the whole picture when you're in the frame. Go back and ask people for honest feedback and say, listen, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I just want to know the truth. Like, I care about you. I want to I wanna learn about myself. What my ex-ex-girlfriend Alyssa said to me, she said, I just noticed that you never talked about your father. And I was with her for four and a half years, and... I think I was running from that truth for the longest time, guys. Just like Kevin's talking about. I feel like we didn't want to face it or something. Yeah. Or maybe we... And I don't think this was even conscious. I think this is just like, oh, well, anytime I would bring it up, people would get somber or, or it would ruin the mood or, or whatever. Or maybe it was, like, just too painful. But one thing I can tell you is that that visiting his grave, that legacy episode, if you go back and listen to it, like, really... Her feedback telling me that I that I never talked about him, I think that's something I might regret too because I think that they, that he's a big part of me. And so, what is that for you? What is that thing for you that's been holding you back or that you're avoiding that might be a little painful, but that if you were to face it, you're going to be so much stronger. And that strength is something that will serve the world and your loved ones. Yeah, it, I think it's it's very hard to consciously realize and I'm going to go deep here that eventually this is not going to be the way it is anymore like I'm not going to be 29 years old nope I'm not I, the friends I have might not be the same friends I have forever I, I hope they are I love them dearly they're my brothers you know that's what I want but my father's not going to be here forever he's most likely going to die before I do fact of life mm -hmm. fact of life um, I'm self-conscious in certain things fact of life like, certain aspects of your life, you have to figure out, you have to consciously realize, okay, this is how I am right now. What can I do to change this? What will I regret if I just say, well, that's the way it was? It doesn't have to be the way it is. You, you get to control what is. You get to put in the effort. I just don't want you guys to regret anything. I don't want you to allow your fears 
to control the rest of your life. I don't want you to not chase your dreams because you don't think you're going to make it. I don't want you to stay at a job that you don't like because that's what everybody tells you to do. I want, I truly want you to do whatever makes you happy. And that's, I think that's why Alan and I are willing to be so vulnerable because if we're vulnerable, maybe you'll write something a little bit deeper on your paper and, um, you know, who knows? Yeah, this got very real. And I think that the nature of this exercise is really important because reverse engineering regret is gonna again just force you to this this is a noisy world man yeah more noisy now than ever before yeah there are shiny objects everywhere you know there there's there's stimulation coming at you through texts and emails and literally the whole world has access to you in your pocket that didn't exist 30 years ago so it's more difficult now to focus on the essentials than ever before in human history Reverse engineer regret and these questions are going to are gonna bring into sharp awareness that which truly matters. And when you look back on your life, do you want to look back and say, I did a whole bunch of stuff decently well? Or do you want to look back and say, I did a few things with magnificence? We went deep. We went deep. We went deep. Ladies and gents, we actually just uh, uploaded some free content to the website, www.thehyperconsciouspodcast.com. Oh, yeah. If you want to uh, visit it, you'll have the free content, some courses, a little bit of my training program behind the scenes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed recording it. Clearly, it was deep for us, but I think that's the fun of having the podcast we do because we're always growing, we're always expanding, and because of you guys, one thing that I will never regret doing is being vulnerable and helping you guys out. So we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed our latest Scratching the Surface episode where we talked all about reverse engineering regret. Up next, we have a dope episode with Devin Klein. He's the creator and CEO of Burn Bootcamp. An author, a speaker, a podcaster, and an overall great human being. Yeah, great guy. Thank you again, Amy, for suggesting him as a dream guest on the podcast. Yes. I liked Devin a lot. At one point, he was chasing his dreams to be in professional baseball, and he was cut from the team. He went deep into that story and eventually grew $600 in his bank account to a $100 million business within six years. So this is an awesome rep. Do not miss it. We hope you will enjoy. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world's going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>